Welcome, 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 everybody. Hi, and welcome back to Transplanter RPG, episode five. Hope is what disarms slash 
the bomb. Uh, it's so great to see all of your beautiful non-faces in the chat. Um, thank you for tuning in. My name is Connie. My pronouns are they, he, and she. I am the GM and executive producer behind Transplaner. As a person, I'm interested in horror, screenwriting, improv, monstrosity, and myth making. You can find me on Twitter at by Connie Chong and on Twitch and Tumblr at D and Daddy Issues. I think I just scrolled past. Uh, so I'm going to pass along introductions. Who would like to go next? I'm going to nominate Devin. Hi, my name is Devin. I use pron I use they them pronouns. I play Manaya Waidua, seven and a half foot tall half orc fighter. Uh, my interests <laughs> lie in music, linguistics, especially Japanese and sign languages from around the world. Uh, you can find me on our Discord server and otherwise nowhere else on the internet. And I'll pass it on down for me to Erica. Hello, everybody. I'm Erica. She, her pronouns, and I play V Nocturzo, that wonderful uh, elf sorcerer, con woman of your dreams. And you can find me at Erica New Girl on all sorts of social media. I do stream here on, on the Twitch where I recently have decided to start playing horror games. And this week, I will be starting Visage on Friday night. So if you enjoy horror and watching me getting scared, tune in. I will pass it on to Max. Hello, uh, I'm Max. My pronouns are they, them. I play Dewey Quirk, the Aarakocra Ranger. And I am into things like papercraft, uh, video games, and fostering cats. I'm going to pass it on to C. Oh, my name is C. I use gender neutral pronouns like they, them. Uh, I'm a digital artist, dancer, performer, etc. Uh, I play Oka Hai, uh, the Asimar Blood Hunter. Uh, and you can find me uh, on Tumblr at pi-sharp or on Twitter at pi-sharpart. Uh, and we'd like to open our episode, as always, by saying, fuck Wizards of the Coast. Let's get a fuck Wizards of the Coast in the chat. Fuck uh, and you can use the, uh, you can use the exclamation point WOTC command in chat at any time to get a full statement on our stance. Thank you for that, C. Uh, it's very funny. Uh, I called you something silly in the captions. As you can see, this is our first time using captions on our overlay. So if y'all see any funny captioning mistakes, pop that in the chat. We'd love to laugh about them later. Uh, so next up, as a reminder, we play our main campaign, this one, every other Saturday. So episode six is going to come out Saturday, September 5th at 3 p.m. CDT on Twitch and lecture three of Professor Chong's Tabletop Workshop, which is our GM Advice series, airs next Saturday, August 29th at 3 p.m. Central on Twitch. And the topic of that lecture is going to be drum row please drum roll drum roll, drum roll. beyond yes and improv tips to improv we your gming uh so we're also going to be debuting some brand new promo partnerships with other bimpoc queer folks and we're trans folks in the tabletop community uh so use exclamation point promo partners at any time to trigger a full list of folks from the scrolling marquee during our waiting room and we are also very excited to announce one partnership in particular floating above my head like a halo uh with games by b which is a one-of-a-kind handmade custom DD and tabletop accessory etsy store that sells dice bags dice trays you could call bespoke uh, and all transplaner fans are going to get 10 percent off literally anything in the store with the coupon transplaner 10 look at that's an example that dem is bringing up it's amazing craftsmanship and b is so incredible to work with so for a link to their awesome store as well as coupon info use exclamation point coupon in the chat uh that's 10 percent off anything transplaner 10 and now erica would you like to thank our donors Absolutely. We just got done with the hype train, so thank you to everyone who has donated, subscribed, gift sub, resubbed. We have a bunch of those today. And or gave bits during session four and lecture two of Professor Chong's tabletop workshop. Uh, here are the people that we'd like to thank. Perfectly normal human goblin, uh, your mom and she, <laughs> uh, Fazman91, Kugrash, Basilisk Shadow Reaver, Ed Fortune, Vinato. Questing Time, Eel O'Brien, Sunny May 18, Key Squared, Airborea, and Suchu230112. Thank you so much for your overwhelming generosity and support. Uh, thanks to you. We actually filed the paperwork and are now an officially LLC, Transplain our art LLC. So thank you. Um, also, as you can see on the overlay, our donation goal is currently at $120. Once we hit that goal, a player-related backstory B-plot will become unlocked. 
Connie will roll a d4, and whosoever name comes up will have their B-plot activated as soon as possible. Moreover, every $15 donated lights up a star on her overlay, which grants one point of collective inspiration to the party. To donate, use the exclamation point tip command. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you so and much. And we would like to further... Oh my gosh. Excuse please, you, Connie. I'm so sorry for cutting uh, off. Please go. <laughs> Okay, the DM, the DM, uh, whatever, I forget the word. Uh, we would like to further thank uh, our subs by announcing a brand new sub-only Twitch category, uh, not Twitch category, a Discord uh, category called Secrets, where you can access character journals and get a behind the scenes glimpse into what each PC and the GM are thinking, uh, as well as character playlists and other little goodies. Uh, we have uh, two brand new sub only emotes in the chat. Also, use them this session. Let's do it. Come on, Nat one, Nat one, Nat one. Uh, so, sub us, smash those emotes, join our Discord, and go read those journals. Great. Thank you so That's much for that, C. Uh, so, next up, speaking of the session, Max, would you like to talk about a recap of what happened last session? Yes. So, uh, just for reference, you can access a written recap of every episode by using exclamation point recap in the chat or going to bit.ly slash trans recap. Um, let me recap what happened last session. So, sitting in Dr. Hitsagutan Beluso's living room, the party finds out the following. Uh, he's known that something catastrophic was coming. He tried to warn the authorities, but nothing was done. And according to his calculations, there's another one set to occur in roughly three and a half years. The gang is invited to join the Egg, or <laughs> Equilibrium and Guidance Group, um, something that Dr. Eluso is organizing to rebalance the world. Manaya is conflicted about the people who knew about these events um, that would eventually kill her parents. V comfort comforts her outside, and eventually the whole party joins up with the Doctor's group. The Doctor wants to test the party by have them capture a many-legged shadowy monster plaguing a clan of Quay, which they do. Um, Dr. Luso then critiques their work, pissing off more than one member. The party decides to stay and help the Quay clean up, leaving the Doctor to research the monster. Great, thank you for that. Uh, Max, and now Devin, would you like to discuss the title of this episode before we jump right into it? Yeah, so the title of this session is called Hope is What Disarms the Bomb. Uh, which is from the poem Notes on Staying in Not Here, and I do not know how to pronounce Vietnamese, so I'm going to try my best and apologize in advance, but the author's name is Hieu Min Nguyen, uh, it's H-I-E-U-M-I-N-H, is it N-G-U-Y-G-E-N? Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to look that up, that's how you spell it. Uh, the whole verse reads, And I should mention hope, since hope is what disarms the bomb, when the city clutches its children good night. The red wire, blue wire optimism of my mother's voice, when she says, I don't need friends, just you. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Devin. Uh, and now we're going to jump right into our session, so hold on to your butts. <clears throat> Tight is the weave of resolve. Loose is the temple of war. Strong be the glacier. Fast be the current. Oka, Dewey, Manaya, and V. Four of you stand within the tunnel inside the upper strata of the yawning Euclid chasm, the dull, sunless light outside the cavern fading quickly. A blockade of crumbled rock and boulder looms before you. The four of you, remember, have pledged to help the Kui excavate this blockage before returning to Dr. Oluso's settlement on the lip of the chasm. What remains of the Hoofbright clan huddles now around a low burning fire in these one legged turquoise ox people looking up at the four of you with their wide, dome like eyes. Connie, we, we're getting a note that your mic, that the music is overpowering your mic. Ah, got it. Let me lower it. Is that better? Is the music still overpowering my mic? 
Can y'all hear me? Mic check, mic check. It's. I'm gonna bite the mic now. Is that better? <laughs> That is better. That's better? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I can also reread that last bit. Yeah, my, my mic is is pretty quiet, so I think I'm just gonna have to bite it. Bite that mic! Uh, I don't really know what's going on. Um, the input on the OBS is my mic directly. I can use some advanced properties, but it's bumped up all the way. I'm really not sure what's happening. I guess I just have to bite it. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's what's going to go on with my mic. Uh, that is what's going on. I'm going to read that last bit uh, again so y'all can respond to it. So the four of you remember Manaya, Oka, Dewey, and V have pledged your support to help excavate the blockage uh, in in service of the Hoofbright clan of the Kui. And now what remains of this separated Hoof Bright clan huddles around this low burning fire. These one legged ox people looking up at the four of you with their wide, innocent eyes. What do you do? Uh, well? still panting a little bit. Uh, and they just kind of like take a deep, okay, okay. Uh, and they try to like, they, they bring their wings in, you know, uh, tight against their back. Uh, uh, try to like pat out the part where they're still a little singed from from these these P- PVP attack earlier, uh, and they're gonna kind of uh, raise a raise an eyebrow to Manaya. You wanna take this one? Well, we're here to clear out the rocks. Let's get started. Uh, I don't think any of us can really see as well as in the dark as you, and so we might have to bring some of the fire down closer to the, the rubble. Um, I've got an axe, so I'm ready to shovel some rocks. Lead the way. And um, at the end of last session, I believe I used Mei Chen to grab the torch that I used light on to have the end just glow. So, so I have that in my hand, so I'm also going to like lead the way and I'm just going to cast light again, probably because it's been almost an hour, and just to have another hour of light coming from it. And I'll help illuminate the way we're going. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Manaya was asking the... anything in particular? What? Dewey, are you doing anything in particular? No. I am following close behind Manaya and V. Okay, cool. Uh, so Manaya, you turn to the boulders, and as you do, one of the Kui hops on their single leg uh, toward you, uh, their turquoise scales glimmering in this low firelight. And you're pretty sure this one is Shen, but I don't know if you've ever spent a lot of time with Kui before, so you're not quite, they look pretty much the same to you. Uh, some of them are slightly bigger than others, maybe. Some of them have a chipped horn here or there. Uh, but this one looks like every other one. Uh, and this one goes, Well, we would really appreciate your help in moving these boulders. As you can tell, it's been a little difficult for us. Because we don't have hands. Just horns and a single hoof. But you have hands and big muscles, it appears. Uh, well, these are oh, not this nothing. It's what you get for working on a ship. Anyway, let's start moving these rocks. Um, how big are the boulders? Are they big enough? Are they small enough for like us to like pick up and move, or do we have to like smash them down to smaller pieces? Some of them are pretty small. Some of them you could probably pick up if you were really, really, really strong. But others, especially the ones toward the back of this cave in, seem pretty big. Uh, maybe multiple people could move them on, or you could use like tools to smash them up. Uh, so how are y'all trying to tackle this, generally speaking, as a party? And then I'll make y'all do some skill rolls to see how successful you are. Uh, I have a grappling hook and a chain, uh, so I feel like using the chains to try to, you know, get around the rock uh-huh. uh, and at least pull pull them out a little more. Uh-huh. I think that's going to be Oka's go-to. Cool. Um, Sounds good. V's strength is terrible, so I'm going to use <laughs> Mage Hand and just grab, like, anything that's, like, you know, 10 pounds or less to just move <laughs> it, like, the little stuff. Cool. So you're just, stuff. like scuffing the edges of this cave-in, looking for the small pebbles, anything you could handle. 
yeah, if there's anything like that's kind of lodged in a little bit, I might like work with my mage hand to like rip out to like so that we can get to the big stuff easier. Sounds good to me. And uh, do we, Manaya? Kanye, remind me how tall this cave is. Um, let's say it's about uh, you're stooping a little. You're stooping a little, so it's just about, I, just okay. about nine or ten feet at its tallest point. So it's like irregular, right? There's like dips okay. in it, so you're you have to stoop a bit during the lower dips. Yep. Yep. So uh, Dewey, Manaya, what are what are y'all's game plans? Dewey is kind of in the same vein as what he's doing, finding any and all rocks he can carry, which is not very many rocks. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, you're just uh, gonna use your little feathered hands to sweep at the tiny pebbles and leave the big heavy lifting to the muscular girl and muscular boy in your party, okay? And Manaya, are you helping out Oka? Uh, yes, but so, moving any rocks that we can carry and smashing any rocks that are too big for us to carry into smaller, carryable pieces. Sounds good. Manaya, since you seem to be mostly using your brute strength, why don't you roll a straight-up athletics check for me to see how effective you are? Um, Oka, because you're also using a tool, your grappling hook, to pull at it. Let's say you can roll athletics with advantage. Um, ho ho ho! Yes. And do we and V make a dexterity check for me, please? First roll of the First session. Roll of the session. Big numbers, big numbers. 19. 19. Big numbers indeed. Okay, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. How about the rest of y'all? Um, 21 for me. 14 for Manaya. Wow. Okay, a decent effort. 21 from Dewey. Very, very competent Six. pebble pushing. Eight. V? 16. 16. Okay. I, I'd say these are pretty round, good numbers across the board. You're able to not only help the Kui excavate what's left of the boulders, but you do it in a average to admirable length of time. Um, the light has faded for sure from the sky by the time you're done, uh, but it hasn't faded for very long, probably only maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Um, and the Kui are all sort of like stand by, just sort of like looking like from you as you're carrying the rocks back to like the rock wall, looking, looking like ping ponging, right? And like a little montage flashes by as like Oka, you grunt and strain against the grappling hook and Manaya, you break it down with your ax and then you carry off the chunks and do your, your scuffling on your hands and knees, uh, pulling, uh, dust panning the pebbles and V, you just sort of lazily swing your wrist and your mage hand takes care of the uh, debris. And finally, when you get to the end of this blockade, you see on the other side of this tunnel more quay uh they seem to have you actually meet them also excavating you sort of meet in the middle and what in the middle of your excavating you hear them sort of gr grunting and straining as well and you see one it looks like an elder perhaps with like weathered horns sort of like a gray muzzled face and their eyes are kind of milky uh, perhaps has some vision uh impairments uh and this elder quay sort of slowly hops lumbers forward and looks up like in noses in the general direction of your party as the final boulder is rolled out of the way and goes outsiders were you helping us uh and the other quite immediately the ones who were uh, in the tunnel with you rush forward and they uh begin to nuzzle and moo uh, and low against the remaining clan which you notice there's a lot more so the people who were cut off were, were probably only like a third or a fourth of the herd that they had. Whoa. You see children being reunited with their parents, cousins with cousins, brothers and sisters. Or so you assume, you can't really tell gender. <sighs> yep. So cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The elder turns to your party and says, thank you for your assistance. I smell monster blood on you. Oh, that, that's our friend Oka. Uh, my name is Manaya. Ah, Manaya, it is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Elder Long. This is my son here, Shen. Our gratitude for your help in not only ridding the monsters, we could hear the fight on the other end of this cave-in, but we could not help and it was torturous to hear your loved ones being attacked and being powerless to stop it. So, thank you so much for lending your help and I also smell Dr. Oluso upon you. Are you perhaps acquaintances or friends? 
You might call us that, yeah. Well, Dr. Olusu is a good man. You are in good company, and we must, again, express our gratitude. If you ever need help in the Euclid chasm, call upon the Hoofbright clan, and we will heed your cries for help. Thank you. And they all sort of bend on their single knees and sort of incline their heads to you. Uh, Oka has to sidestep so they don't get gored by a little horn. Right. Uh, <laughs> Shen sort of gives you a sideways look, Oka, and m m whispers something in Elder Long's uh, ear. You don't really know. <laughs> they don't seem to have ears, really, as so much as flaps of scales. And Elder Long goes, oh, is that so? Well, I'm sure this one did not mean to lie. <laughs> It is getting late. Oh, scratches their forehead. You can certainly rest the night here, or if you have other business to attend to, we can send you on your way out of the chasm with an escort. Oh, well, to be honest, I hadn't been keeping a track of the time. Um, as for the um, monsters, uh, I hear that they thrive in the dark did you you didn't have any on this side of the collapse did you thankfully no it seems oh. we could hear them in the other tunnel systems trying to break their way in but they didn't seem to originate from within the caves all of the attacks that we've heard of from within the chasm they seem to have come from outside at least this doesn't mean they were buried within the earth, waiting for millions of years to burst through. Ah, that would be terrifying. Oh, that really would. I feel like it's just as terrifying now. Uh, a child, a very small baby quay, little nubs, little nubbins for horns, sort of uh, bounces forward and says, sort of like tugs on the elder's beard with, with their mouth, and the elder goes, oh, oh, yes, what is it, yeah? And yeah. Uh, this little, tiny little Quay says, I, I saw them. I saw them come. They fell from the sky in a glowing orb. And then when they touched the ground, they splattered outward. And from that glowing orb became darkness. And Lung goes, Ah, oh, the tales of children. How disconcerting. No, this is Where did you see it? In the gorge. Lower strata. Ah, uh, you know, I I wouldn't pay. And the elder sort of like leans into the four of you. I wouldn't pay Yuya's tales much attention. They have a uh, reputation for exaggerating. Which, of course, we tried to root out of them due to our strong honesty bound culture. Uh, Grandpa, I'm not exaggerating. I saw it, I swear. I swear on Galtanger. Manaya is going to kneel down uh, to Yue and and say to them directly. One, or well, say to them, but also the people around. One should one should not dismiss dismiss the tales that children tell. For every tale has at least a grain of truth. We'll keep an eye out to make sure no more come tonight. But tomorrow, I'm sorry to say we must go back to, doc to the doctor. I understand. It seems like the doctor is scrambling tr to try to fix this entire mess. And if there's anyone who can do it, it's them. Yes, you're more than welcome to come roost with us for the night. We, we have a delicious selection of lizards and rocks for you to chew upon. I turned to Manaya and said, wait, Your hospitality when, when did we decide that we were staying? Oh, no, you're free to go back to that traitorous doctor. I'm going to stay here and make sure that these people are safe. Uh, we really appreciate it, but we think it will be much safer deeper within the tunnels. We'll be able to set up a uh, movable blockade that only we, the Kui, can move. So that any monsters that come in will have a hard time getting through. And now that our clan is reunited, we should be able to set up the blockade because our powers can be pooled. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Certainly, but you can definitely stay. It's up to you, honestly, what you'd like to do now. 
I would really like to get my hands in some of that goopy stuff yeah. uh, as soon as possible. No, no wonder you smell like it. Hey, you well, smell like a cave cow. <laughs> <laughs> what was well, that? With your, uh, pay them no mind. Okay. With your safety assured, I, uh, I think we really should be going back to the doctor. They uh, were looking for us to uh, help them with some whatever. Very well. Well, we, we, I'll send an escort, my strongest fighter, Bow. Uh, and sort of coming from the back, you all hear a chorus of moo, moo, and bow, bow. As a huge, <laughs> what, the biggest one, the biggest ox of them all sort of hops forward. He's extremely muscular, has four horns instead of two, uh, and uh, lumbers forward. Uh, he's tall. He's taller than Dewey, which is saying something because these oxen are very small. Uh, <laughs> and he goes... I shall help escort you out of the upper strata. It will be my duty and my honor. Your escort uh, is well appreciated. Follow me. Uh, and Bao sort of hops, every hop thudding like thunder against the <laughs> rock floor of this tunnel. This huge muscle-bound turquoise scaled ox. Uh, and he leads you out of the tunnel as the rest of the Hoofbright clan sort of do their summation of what you think is waving. They sort of like rock their horns back and forth and moo in uh, saying goodbye as the four of you follow Bao. Cool. Uh, is there anything else you would like to do before you return to Dr. Oluso's homestead? Uh, v is going to cast message and say directly into Oka's mind, that is the first time I've done something nice without a payment in a very long time, and I don't like it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'll uh, Oka will respond. Uh, you know, I would pay you to teach me how to fucking lie better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you do notice that, that Bao is very friendly to all of you except for Oka. He sort of like, <laughs> like looks at Oka with with disdain and distrust. But yeah, continue, continue. Um, yeah, Vu's just gonna cast matches and be like, "We could work on it. You could definitely work on your line. We could practice." I thought I was really convincing. I don't even remember what it was I said. But I thought, I mean, it was so small. I don't know how this all threw me. He just starts laughing, which to the rest of the party, just like, they don't understand why she's laughing. That's it. <laughs> uh, Bao leads your group. Uh, Y'all have light on, right? Y'all have cast light. Yeah. I know V has, and Oka, I'm assuming you have as well. Uh, this small radius of light fanning out from your party as Bao hops, thudding thudding, thudding, back up the path, back up the way you came. And within a few minutes, probably within within the hour, uh, you make your way back out of the uh, chasm and onto the lip of the Euclid, where you can see Dr. Oluso's uh, stone-thatched, uh, roofed cottage uh, standing, looming in the dark. Uh, small glowing sigils you can see now in the darkness, uh, encircling, wrapping the circumference of the wood of the house. Uh, the glyphs are in sort of like an arcane language, and Bao stops there and says, I must return to my people. Safe travels. And to you as well. And he uh, inclines you know, his head. You know, I bet if you just stomped, if any of those things come back, if you could just get one good stomp on them. Yes, I will stomp them to death with my hoof. Uh, and and Bao says, It is unfortunate I was trapped on the other side of the blockade. Perhaps we would not have needed your assistance. We are stronger in numbers. Again, you have the loyalty and the gratitude of the Hoofbright clan of the upper strata of the Euclid chasm if you are ever in need of help inclines his horned head again, uh, looks at you with one final piercing gaze, Oka, and then hops, turns around, and hops back down into the gorge until uh, they disappear into the darkness. You know, I think if we ever do actually need their help, I should not be the one 
asking for it. Just <laughs> putting that out there. Like literally anyone else. No, I think you should always be the first person always. <laughs> it's how you build trust. Wait, really? No, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> new lying lessons. So are y'all gonna go into the cottage now? Are you gonna hang around outside in the dark for a bit? Or what's your play here? To the cottage. All right, I to the guess. cottage. Uh, Manaya, <laughs> you drag your feet a little, uh, not enthused about seeing this traitorous doctor as you called him. Uh, so the four of you finally reapproach the cottage. Uh, you stand, you, you walk up the little like stone platform that the cottage is elevated on, and you can sort of see like a warm, glowing night, uh, light from inside coming, like filtering through the cloth curtains that are drawn shut uh, over the windows and you push your way in. As you do, you see Dr. Aluso uh, standing rather, let's say, uh, a little awkwardly uh, in the middle of the cottage, uh, wearing what appears to be a flower-stained apron. Uh, and you also see that the table where they had unfurled the scroll is now cleared, and instead of any like materials on it, you see what appears to be multiple oblong fried cakes. Um, all about like tan or brownish in color, uh, each of which is marked with a design that resembles the cross-hatched bottom of a shoe. Uh, you also see chunks of sugar, some wrapped candies here and there, and cubes of hardened cheese sitting in a tray nearby. Uh, so as the four of you enter, Squeak is also in the corner. She's just standing there staring. Uh, as the four of you, <laughs> she's standing there staring. Uh, as the four of you enter, uh, Dr. Lucius says, ah, Welcome back. Another party, is it? Manaya glances at V. What? What? what why are you looking at me? Uh, v loves parties. I've been known to party. Oh shit! I love those little candies too. <laughs> <laughs> those little candy bitches. Wait, these are totally my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love these little candy bitches. <laughs> uh, Doctor Lucius says, Ah. Uh, yes. Are you f familiar with Kyrian culture? I... I love these little candies. Yes, they're quite like wonderful. Like I said. Uh, uh, feel free to, um, go ahead and dig in, uh, but I just wanted to say, uh... <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Lucy sort of clears their throats, uh, their awkwardness sort of intensifies as they just sort of, they're just sort of standing there, they're not holding anything. Uh, their hands are, their arms are kind of stiff by their sides, uh, and they're sort of like looking maybe like a foot above all of your heads as they speak, and they say, I wanted to, uh, uh apologize, uh, for what I said earlier tonight, uh, I realize in hindsight that my feedback may have been uh, <clears throat> ab abrasive. Uh, it's It's been a while since I've interacted with anyone except for Squeak. Uh, I, I was thinking we could stack this old move together as a belated Adolin celebration. Uh, I made it while you were gone. I, I was hoping we could eat and talk. I, could I would always... love to talk. Conversation is always good. Great. Okay. I mean, Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, uh, have have a seat. Are any of you familiar with with all the moves? Are any of us familiar with? Um, that? unless you have any reason to be familiar with Kyrian culture, I don't think there would be. I don't think you would. Or if you've like known anyone from Kirtal. Yeah, so uh, why don't y'all actually just roll uh, roll a culture check? I'm gonna say culture and history go in the same check, so intelligence. See if you might have read about this tradition anywhere, or learned about it somehow. You said it's a history check? Yeah, just a straight up history that's under intelligence. A gentleman's seven. A gentleman's seven from Oka. A queen's three. A queen's three from V. Dewey Manaya. I'm trying to think. Is Kirtal isn't landlocked, is it? Um Cause because Jukai is right there. On Jukai the, is right there. On yeah, the... I think I think it's I think it's landlocked. Okay, so Manaya yeah. would have not had any It's possibly might have like heard tales, you know, or anything which is oh, like, okay, that's fine. Uh, what did you get, Dewey? 
Uh, you're either muted or I couldn't hear you. A peasant's 23. A peasant's 23. <laughs> 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 I mean, that makes sense. Dewey is a researcher. That makes the most sense to me. Uh, Manaya? Nine. Okay, uh, Manaya, Oka, and V, mm, you're not really sure what's up with this cake or if it has any significance or anything. It, just, it looks like a cake, like cakes, various cakes, like shoe, like oblong shoe pattern cakes. Dewey, you have heard of this tradition. Uh, the Olbuv is a kind of um, traditional Kyrian uh, pastry. It is similar to like a what we in like the real world would consider like a Christmas tree or like a menorah even. It's usually like made and stacked in like a very ritualistic way that's similar to like lighting the candles on a menorah um, to celebrate a new year, a new year, uh, to like welcome in the new year. And it's like uh, native to the, the clans of Kirtal. And me as a GM note, I, uh, Old Move is an actual Mongolian traditional cake. Uh, that is for the, their New Year celebration, the Lunar New Year, and welcome it in. Uh, so, yeah, with your 23, you also know not only this, maybe you like stumbled upon just a random scroll while you're working at the URL, or, like something about like Kyrian traditions. You also know that each aspect of the Olubuv has social significance as well. So families make the soul like impression in each cake with a wooden stamp that they pass down through generations. Uh, and each stamp is unique. So Olubuv designs sort of identify families like a fingerprint. So it's interesting that Dr. Luso seems to either have access to a stamp or has made their own uh, impression in each cake. Um, and you also know that tradition dictates that the number of layers in the cake and how it's stacked in sort of like a hexagonal, hexagonal shape um, uh, depends on your role in the family. So elders typically prepare seven layers, young couples stack three, and everyone else makes five layers. Uh, but there, there don't seem to be enough cakes right now for any of those. These just seem to be, seems to be a more laid back version of the usual tradition. That's what uh, you know, Dewey, looking at this uh, cake. Uh, I'm gonna make a show of looking at the marks on the cake. Okay. And being like, wow, this is so, this is so uh, intricate. Can I see the stamp you've- Ah, uh, yes, of course. I'm surprised and impressed that you're familiar with the tradition. Please dig in, help yourselves. Uh, Dr. Luso says as they ruffle, you know, they rustle through a drawer and they pull out uh, a stamp, a wooden stamp. It appears pretty new, actually, Dewey, uh, and they hand it to you. And you see, like, the engravings match what's been stamped on each cake. Uh, Oka has two pieces of candy in their lip. Okay. Um, like, what are you looking at, Dewey? I've, uh, I've read about these... They're passed down from within a family. Um, I don't know. It's a Kyrian tradition I've just read about in books. I I hand it back to Dr. Aluso. Oh, yes. This obviously wasn't passed down. As you can tell, the grain of the wood is very new. I decided to make one myself after uh, <clears throat> learning how to make it from a family in Kirtal. Please eat. It's Are you delicious. from Kirtal, Doctor? Uh, no, I am not. I'm a wanderer. I don't really lay claim to a home or a nation. But I, I have friends all over, uh, acquaintances. We don't really, uh, we don't really keep keep in touch that much, though. I mean, okay, okay, okay. Well, please dig in. Uh, it's, it's you know, I, uh, I like to think that I uh, know what I'm doing in the in the in the kitchen. I spend a lot of time there alone so oh hydrate command wonderful let's sip babes so what do the uh, oka's gonna start tearing into the food great okay yeah, you sit part. down and you begin ripping ripping this uh shoe 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 sole cake a new one uh you rip into it it's very um rich uh very sweet and uh sugary but also like doughy in a nice way um, and it pairs mm. nicely with the candies as well as like the blocks of hardened cheese. V's gonna listen. take some, oh, and just eat it. Watching Oka just plow into it, V is just like taking little chunks at a time, just being very careful about it. Are you worried about it being poisoned or something? Of course, I'm V. I know he's going to try me. A doctor, this sort of clocks your slow eating and says, I. 
promise, there's nothing bad in this unless you're allergic to dairy. Do you know how many times Shit. people have promised me that they have not poisoned something and then I find out it's poisoned after the fact? I will take my chances being safe. Thank you. I understand, but it is a delicious pastry and you'll be missing out. I'm eating it, am I not? That's, that's fair. Uh, Dewey, please help yourself. If you know what this is, you should know how it tastes, theoretically, at least. Uh, I've read about it, but I'm interested to see how it tastes, and I chew into it. <laughs> yeah, again, it's it's nice. It's, like, sweet and, and doughy, very rich and thick. Um, kind of similar in consistency to, like, a moon moon cake, probably. Yeah. Uh, but more more of a fried dough, doughy quality. Manaya. Manaya's gonna take a couple of bites and then set her plate down. Okay. Uh, once everyone has sort of, like, settled in a little bit and started eating... Um, Dr. Luso says, So I assume you were able to help the Kui clear the uh, blockade. Yes, we reunited them with their family, and they are now well uh, fortified against those monsters. Wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. They must be very grateful. The Kui are a uh, the Hoofbright clan, at least, are a very um, dignified family. They remember their debts, and they like to repay them. <laughs> they said something about a, a light falling from the sky uh, into the gorge, and that's where all the monsters came from. A light. Do you know anything about that? It's a uh, little, little kid. Dr. Aluso pauses and says, how did they describe this light? Did anyone take better notes than I did? <laughs> like an, it was like an orange light of ball came down from the sky into the earth and splat out things. Orange. It. I did notice something. I wasn't sure what to make of it. On the night of the cataclysm, the vanishing, whatever you want to call it, I did... I thought I saw something falling from the sky into the chasm, but I didn't get a really good look. It was glowing, but in a way I'd never seen anything glow before, almost like it was pulsing with the darkness. But as I plunged into the gorge, obviously I can't see in the dark, I didn't see where it went. But that that might have been what, the, what this Kui saw. I wonder how it's Remember related. to bite your mic, Connie. Oh, right. I wonder how it's related to the Cataclysm and the monsters. Is it possible they fell from the sky? You know, the Quay said that they didn't come out of the earth. There were none in the caves. They were just trying to get into the caves. And I would trust a Quay's word on that. They're very attuned to the earth. Uh. If they say that they didn't sense any monsters disturbing their nests, I'm inclined to believe them. Though, speaking of the monster, I can share what I've learned while you were helping the Kui. Oh, did you already dig in? I... Oka says with a fistful of cake. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I did. It's... It's still alive if you want to go down and take a look at yourself. But I, uh, I, th I think I should tell you what I've discovered before you do. Uh, Dr. Luso clears their throat and sets down their plate. Um, and they say, I've learned three disturbing and very important things about this monster. First of all, I have to thank you again for catching it for me. Uh, if it weren't alive, I doubt I would have learned any of these things. The first thing is that it appears to be stronger and more evasive in dim and no light. It's harder to hit, it's faster. Uh, I, I tested it by shutting out the lights, and I realized that I had a hard time hitting it, even though I'm pretty good at hunting even at night. So what this means uh, mechanically is that you will have disadvantage on attack rolls against these kinds of creatures in dim light and no light for y'all as players. The uh, second thing I learned is that it, it seems to possess some sort of... Uh, Dr. Oluso looks a little disturbed. Sack. Within its body. 
like, um, <clears throat> I was, uh, yeah, it looked like some, some kind of sack. It didn't have organs. It had blood, but no heart, no intestines, nothing like that. Just the huge mouth, as I'm sure you remember, sort of at the bottom of that mouth of its throat, though I hesitate to call it a throat, it was more like a passageway, was was a sack. Kind of like a stomach, perhaps, but that was the only thing I found inside of it. It appeared like, empty. Like an ink sack? Uh, like a... Uh, like Squeak's sack. Uh, and points at the satchel that's sort of tied to S Squeak's belt, and Squeak goes, What? That's disgusting. Um, you know, when we were fighting the first ones, I uh, uh, crawled into its mouth, uh, and I didn't get eaten. I went in willingly, to be clear, uh, and there wasn't really anything in there, actually, now that I am remembering. There were just lots of passages that seemed to go to all the different mouths. Uh huh. Uh, Doctor Alusa looks very disturbed uh, by what you said, Oka, and says, "Here's the third thing I discovered, and perhaps the most disturbing thing." Um, <clears throat> I said it was empty, right? Uh, but I had I had a kind of suspicion. Uh, after all, it had been attacking the Quay, and for there not to even have been any remnants of the body parts inside this thing being digested, it, it struck me as odd. I have an object in my possession, known as a gem of seeing. It allows me to see the true state and appearances of things. Uh, even though it's a powerful object, it only has a few charges left, and I decided to spend one charge to peer at this sack within this creature's body. And I saw... Dr. Aluso's uh, brow furrows deeply, and a dark look comes over their face. A soul. Um. Like, it's soul? No. No. This was not- this soul did not belong to this creature. It belonged to someone else. If I had to guess, a queen. Oh, fuck. So, the odd thing is, the soul appeared to be in a state of suspended animation. Souls usually have their own aura, their own uh, spiritual energy. This one seemed like it was suspended in amber, fossilized. Something about the sack, something about its properties. Um, Oka, have you ever fought a hag before? Mm hmm. Have you ever fought a night hag? Yes. Did you manage to take her soul bag? No. Not all of them carry them on just... them. Um, it, it struck me as the, the most similar thing I could compare it to in our world was a, a soul bag of a night hag. If you don't know what that is, it's, uh, object that hags make out of uh, the flesh of people in order to hold the souls of, well, evil, evil folk within them in a state of suspended animation until, of course, the hag consumes the soul. But this, this soul was not being consumed. It was not being digested. It was simply being held, almost as though the monster were, I don't know, waiting for something or transporting it. So I decided to this is the third thing I discovered. I decided to release the soul and let the Kui finally get its rest, to move to the beyond, to the after, and, and be reunited with its ancestors. And I'm afraid I made a grave mistake, because as soon as I pulled the soul out of the sack, the soul ended up dissipating into nothingness. Like the Kuala. Excuse me? And V is going to talk about what she felt after they killed the Quaddle, where, like, it didn't die normally, how the weave normally reacts to death. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Dr. Aluso sort of takes this in and, like, is nodding slowly and goes, I see. So it appears that this is not the first time this has happened. I, I don't know what any of this means. I, I fear I may have doomed that poor Kui's soul to, well, nothingness. If all souls, if people, typically speaking, when we die, our souls go to the after, right? It travels through the ethereal plane, the veil that, con- that separates the now and the after, and it, it resides finally in the after. But if the soul is, has nowhere to go, then it simply vanishes, which means that we're not just separated from the beyond and can't contact the gods, but we're also separated from the after. That's what I've discovered. I hope this satiates some of your unsatisfied feelings about the talk we had last time. I would hardly call that satiating. I think I have more concerns than I did when we started the conversation. But now we have information more knowledge about what's to come next. This will, at the very least, aid our future investigations. So if we die to any of these creatures, though, it is safe to assume that uh, our souls, if that's what you call it, uh, will get stuck inside of these creatures? It appears so. Well, let's not die, friends. Yes. Death will be very much permanent. Wasn't planning on it. I wonder, though. If the... If the sacks are, like... Holding onto the souls, like they're... Amber fossils... As long as the creature doesn't die, or you don't take the soul out, it stays put, right? If we can bring the beyond and the after back, and then kill all these monsters with their souls, go to the after. Uh, Dr. Luso nods and says, That is a viable plan. I'd have to build a lot more cages, though. Think of all the people they they must have attacked by now. But, so this, <gasps> did you, this sack, I'm just curious, was it still inside of the creature, or you weren't able to, like, take it out of the creature? I kind of forcibly made it regurgitate. Ah. Sounds lovely. I'm glad I ate before this conversation. I'm sorry, I have my methods. <laughs> Can't disagree. But it's still alive down there, you say, creature. Yes. Well, maybe we should go take a look and see if there's anything else we can learn from them. Uh, you can if you want. It's pretty aggressive. And unless you know how to use my tools or if I'm there to assist you, I, I wouldn't want you going down there alone. I thought you said it was in a cage. It is. Uh, but to inspect it, I take it out of its cage and I strap it down. Hard little bugger to strap down, I imagine. Do we... I, um... How are you feeling about all of this information? I... You're someone who seems to know a lot of things that I'm... surprise me every day. Um, what are your thoughts and feelings about all this? I also have more questions than I... had before this conversation. And also some questions about mm, the good doctor's methods. Are you going to ask them? Uh, we can discuss this later in private. With the doctor or with the party? Yeah, with the doctor. Cool. Uh, it's, it's getting late. Best head to bed before I uh, let you know what I have in store for you in terms of your mission in the morning. If you're still... Oh, so the good doc... 
So the good doctor has decided that despite our chaotic lack of teamwork, we uh, still ought to work together. Like I said, I'm sorry for saying that. <laughs> sorry, this cake is really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. And by now, V has like also started like consuming it quite a lot. She like feels pretty safe that it's not going to kill her. Dewey's lost his appetite. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> uh, so, what's your play right now? What are y'all doing? Um, I actually want to speak to Squeak. Okay. Um, I just Squeak. Uh, I know that you sell, buy, and sell a lot of things. I was just curious. I've got some unprocessed gems. I was wondering. Either do you know uh, how to process gems and make these a little bit uh, more valuable, or would you know ways that I could get them processed? Do I... Do I look like an anvil and a chisel to you? You know, you, you surprise me every day that we talk. You seem like a very capable person. How might, I've only known you for probably a day, so you never know until you ask. Well... If you're gonna take this mission that Dr. Luso's giving you, you'll have plenty of opportunity to process these gems. I don't have access to my workshop right now, so I can't do it for you. Okay, that is all I needed to know. Thank you. you don't... Thank you. You're very helpful. I love you very much. And I cast message to Oka. Okay, see, that, that is how you do it. <sighs> A squeak just sort of narrows, narrows her big, bulbous, grung eyes at you. She's still extremely suspicious of your party. Uh, and she's not even trying to hide it. Not even going to make you make an insight check. She's like <laughs> narrowing her eyes at all of you. Hydrate. Anyone else before you head to bed? I think we got a double hydrate. A double we hydrate? Did. Wow, okay. We did. Anyone want to do anything else? Um. Uh, no. Sorry. Devin? Max? No? Okay. Uh, so the four of you, uh, Squeak sort of leads the four of you to, like, a small shack, like, shack-like area. Almost like a little, like, barn loft connected to the back of Dr. Luce's cottage, where sort of you can sleep in the hayloft. Um, and as she's sort of leading the four of you out outside uh, dr luso also follows behind and says uh you don't really have to worry about your sorry this music is extremely intense out of nowhere uh i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna change it it's like y'all aren't getting stalked right now yet by some sort of crazy uh excuse me uh very scary monster uh so dr luso dr. says luso, it's... <laughs> sorry i was gonna make a joke go on uh dr luso says uh you don't have to worry about being stalked or attacked in the middle of the night here i have spent many years of my life building up magical wards around my property i think that's why my chickens are still intact at the very least and of course i'm just i'll be in the other house so if anything happens out here i'll be able to help out uh v there should be beds already prepared up at the hayloft um, but be before the four of you go, uh, Oka, can I have a word with you in private? Oh, uh, sure. Great, uh, have a good night, the rest of you. Uh, and Dr. Elusa sort of pulls you aside to where the chickens are pecking. Is anyone gonna try to eavesdrop, or are y'all going to bed? Um... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, why don't you roll stealth against uh, Oka's uh, perception, passive perception, which is a 12. I think it increased because something increased. Did your wisdom you said... increase? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, I also rolled a 12. What, what did you get, see? What's your- uh, I think passive perception is 8 or 10. What is it? It's no, your passive plus perception. Your perception is... modifier? Uh, does anyone in the chat know how to calculate passive perception? Da, 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 <laughs> no. da, da, it's ten plus da, your da. ten, ten plus, plus your perception. perception I think, yeah. Ten plus okay, perception. It's a fourteen now. Okay, yeah, that does not, that does not cut it, V. Uh, as you, Oka, and Doctor Luso stop by the chickens, Oka, your ears sort of uh, twitch. The tips of your ears twitch as you hear something apparently stalking you in the darkness behind you footsteps squeaking in the mud. 
uh, d- drawing the sword immediately, and they're like, I thought you said we weren't going to be followed. Uh, uh, you turn around, <laughs> and ignited by the glow of your sword, you see V. I was out here to look at these beautiful chickens, which you said they are protected. I was so... They're lovely chickens. Hello. <laughs> Dr. Lucy says, uh, can we please have a moment of privacy? <sighs> Uh, secrets are lies, but okay, fine, have fun, I go back into the... Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you failed, you failed. V, go, go tuck your tail between your legs in shame. Okay, uh, so this conversation is probably the one we're going to have right before the break. Uh, so Dr. Oluso turns to you, Oka, and says, uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I noticed something else during my examination of your chest scar earlier tonight. I didn't want to say anything in front of your companions because you strike me as a person who values discretion. I appreciate that. I noticed that your T is heavily blocked. I've actually never really seen anything like it before. Uh, There appears to be a lot of spiritual um, repression occurring. And I fear that if it continues to go untreated for as long as I suspect it has, your body will soon begin to suffer the consequences, especially now that the gods are not around to protect you. Fuck! Uh... <laughs> that, that was C. I had to let that out. Uh... <clears throat> My... What? What? What's blocked? I'm sick? Your teeth. Uh, and you would know what uh, Dr. Luce is referring to. It's sort of like the uh, energy that flows through everyone's body. Not necessarily magical, more so just like spiritual, perhaps. Um, though it can very much be magical. Uh, and Dr. Luce says, yes, it's been blocked for quite a while now. Probably at least a few years, if not almost a decade. Uh, Oka casts light in their palm. Okay. And, like, turns it over their fingers like a little ball. Okay. But everything seems fine. Yeah, and you look physically this. okay, aside from the fact that you have a big-ass scar on your, you know, chest and all across your body. Right. Mm-hmm. So how do I... how do I unblock it? I... I know someone who might be able to help you. Uh, a specialist in this sort of thing but I, I actually sent her and her friends out on a different field mission. They they should be back by the time your party returns as well. Okay. What's her name? Uh, let me look it up. Hold on. <laughs> Give me a moment to look up this NPC's name. Give me a moment. Where is it? There it is. Uh, her name Her name is Voska. Voska Jiang. Okay. Well. We'll talk then, then. Very well. It's up to you if you wish to disclose this information to the rest of your party. I I don't think it would hinder your performance in combat or battle quite yet. But if you... These sorts of things usually have a source or a trigger. If you do get closer to the source of your repression or your trigger, then it might begin to hinder you unless it is untreated. Understood. Do you have any idea what <clears throat> that sort of trigger or source might be? <clears throat> I'm not asking because I'm trying to pry. I'm asking for your sake. It might be good for me to know so I can help you. I have a plenty fine idea, just, uh... <clears throat> Let's see if we can avoid missions to too long, please. Understood. Have a good night, Oka. You as well, Doctor. Uh, and Dr. Luso sees you off as you go back into the hayloft. And we can take our break there.
if that sounds good to everyone. Uh, we're going to take a quick 10 minute break. We're going to roll not only our break screen, but also a fan art reel, a promo highlight of the week, as well as our promo partners reel. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of cool little advertisements of cool podcasts and craftspeople and artists you should check out that are bimpa, queer, and or trans. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Set your timer. Uh, we love y'all. Peace.
when we started this journey, I was just a dropout from the College of Arcanists. Some girl who could turn into animals. A pickpocket looking for answers. I was a swan. But along the way, I found hope. Love. Family. I found out I can turn into a giant worm. Okay, look, Signana, I... What? He's right. But it's really not fitting in with the tone of what we're going for here. I mean, we're all talking about... Queer Dungeoneers, an actual play podcast about being who you are by being someone different. I can turn into a worm. Oh, forget it. Check your yes. It would be under. But up, up. Hold on. How about now? How's this hearing? 
Can y'all hear my beautiful voice, my dulcet tones? Does it sound better than last time? Question, question for the, yes, perfect. We're back, we have sound, wonderful. I think I fixed it because my mic was plugged into the wrong jack. Uh, so let's get right back into the action uh, and jump into what's happening after our party wakes up from your hopefully very restful sleep so y'all can take all the benefits of a long rest on your character sheet after Hooray! taking this uh, little rest, this little nap. Uh, the four of you wake up with um, quote-unquote sunlight or rather the sunless sky the light from the sunless sky sh uh, shuddering in through the uh, gaps in the wooden slats of this hayloft um the bed quote-unquote bed that had saguten oluso had set up for each of you was less of a bed more of a pile of hay uh and some like soft feathers <laughs> from their chickens presumably that they shed that they stuffed into a a, a a makeshift pillow, but it was surprisingly very comfortable given the fact that it was in a barn. Um, you wake up to the smell of, of breakfast uh, cooking outside of Hitsaguten Oluso's cottage. It smells like slow roasted lamb, uh, charcoal grilled perhaps. You wake up to this delicious smell, s saliva sort of filling your mouths, and you get ready for the day. Uh, by the time you 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 leave the hayloft and you exit the barn, you see Doctor Hitsagutan Oluso uh, prodding a low burning uh, campfire. It appears right outside of their home, where they are roasting a leg of lamb over it, and they say, "Good morning, breakfast." Yes, please. I would absolutely love to. I'm famished. Help yourself. And they gesture to like some knives that they and like forks and plates that they have set around the campfire. Uh, the chickens, you notice, are pecking at scraps, fresh scraps, uh, from the cake, the cakes from last night, in their in their pen. Not the lamb. No, <laughs> they're not carnivorous. Yeah. <laughs> they aren't those chickens. Nope. Speaking of birds that aren't carnivorous. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna pass on the lamb for breakfast. Okay. Uh, good thing I still have some stuff I foraged from our long trip. Sure, Eluso, uh, Dr. Eluso sees you eating the foraged berries and nuts and whatnot and says, Oh, Dewey, are you not a fan of lamb? No, I'm not so big on the uh, grilled meat for breakfast thing or grilled meat in general. Oh, are you a vegetarian? Uh, close enough. I should have asked. Um, I have I have some uh, fresh produce. I could fry something up for you real fast. Uh, I don't want to inconvenience no, you. Please, Maybe it's for, it's my pleasure. Lunch? It's my pleasure. Okay. How do you uh, take your eggs? I'm sorry. Is that in insensitive? <laughs> I'll just stick with my nuts and seeds for breakfast. Uh. Are you sure? I make I make a killer kale salad. It's really good. <laughs> uh, Hitsangudan looks really earnestly at you. It's a really yummy salad. Squeak! Squeak can tell you how much she likes my salad. Squeak! Uh, I like your salad when I eat it, but I prefer bugs. There you have it! <laughs> Or do you eat I bugs? Can't we were role playing out an awkward breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, you. This is just like a real life. I just like drift away. Okay. <laughs> Doctor Lusa goes no. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and y the rest of you finish up your breakfast, and when you're done, Doctor Lusa says, "I hope um, the hay wasn't too scratchy in the night, and that you are well rested now." We've been sleeping in the wastes for the last forty days, so. Ah, so I suppose this is an upgrade. Wonderful. Uh, well, I'd love to tell the four of you about the mission I would like to send you on, um, if you're still feeling up to it. Go for it. Tell me about the mission before I agree to anything. <laughs> that makes sense, of course, I'll tell you. So I'm not sure if you've heard about the riots in Dabathati. We have. Okay, well, just to sort of jog your memory, 
there have been rumors of the miners uh, in the Ujval mines in D- Dabathati, which is the capital, of course, of Talmud, the Republic, um, uh, in the wake of the cataclysm. I suspect that, of course, it makes sense that the miners are upset. Their livelihood is threatened in a very literal, physical way, but I think there's something deeper. I have a feeling that these riots, uh, there's more than meets the eye about them, and I, I would like the four of you to investigate the true reason why the miners are rioting, why they're so upset and angry. Part of my suspicion is aroused, of course, by the fact that my reports indicate that the rioters are also attacking innocent people, which, you know, if they were truly upset at, let's say, the consulate or, you know, the senators, why not just target them? Why attack the people? So I fear that innocent lives are being hurt and even demolished during these, you know, uprisings. Do you think it might have something to do with a monster? I would not be surprised if a monster were involved in some way, is what I'll say. Uh, Dabathati is also where the headquarters of Chrysalis are. If you don't know what Chrysalis is, it is a... (laughs) They're a group of doomsday cultists, is what they are. They claim that they have the path to enlightenment, and they claim to worship a... Dr. Luso rolls their eyes, entity known as the Chrysalis, that they say can grant them a perfect body in the wake of the eight disappearing on us. They're nothing more than cultists. I suspect Um. they might be involved in this as well. Perfect, because I'm considered a prophet by some of their preachers. Excuse me? I convinced one of them that uh, the chrysalis gave me certain powers to transform my bodies, and they were very taken by it. They were very enjoyable. They gave me the they gave me the redress. I've got. I was gonna go stop by and knock on the door. You made yourself known to the chrysalis as a prophet? I did nothing of the sort. They pronounced me prophet. I just do what I do. V, not only was that extremely foolhardy, impulsive, and dangerous of you to do, but it was also extremely intelligent. You now That's have an, what I'm saying! <laughs> you now have an in with the chrysalis. They likely yeah. wouldn't suspect someone they think is a prophet. So if they do end up being involved somehow in these riots, you have a way to get in. This is why you... V does what V does, okay? It's, it's the long game. I mean, it's the long game. Uh-huh. I guess Doctor, I'm... you really should not encourage her. I understand. A broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, was that rude? I can't tell what's rude or not. Who killed Creature last time down that you got in your basement? It was your friend V. Let's not criticize. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. It's just second nature for me to scrutinize not just things, but people as well. I have to stop doing that. It's a bad habit of mine. Do you have any other questions about this mission that I have in store for you? Well... I suppose the first is, how do we tell you what's going on? And what do you want us to do, particularly? Do you you want us to just go and check it out? Do you want us to stop the riots if they are, you know, dependent on a monster? What's the goal here? I understand you to go, but uh, I prefer taking action over just watching. Ideally, if you can stop the riots, please do. But if stopping them would jeopardize your life, I prefer that you just retreat and take what information you have and give it to me. I, um, <clears throat> in terms of speaking, I have a scrying bowl you can use. There's a certain ritual you have to activate. Uh, but after the ritual is satisfied, we should be able to communicate for up to 10 minutes before the bowl needs to reset for the next day. That's it will usually some high powered magic to do such a thing. Well, over the long course of my career, I've acquired quite a few useful magical items here and there. 
Uh, speaking of which, I would like to give one of them to you right now, just as a thanks for helping me capture the monster, uh, as well as to aid you on your journey. Uh, this gem of seeing that I mentioned earlier, I would like to give your party. Uh, and Dr. Oluso reaches into their pocket and they pull out like a, a completely transparent, like if you like placed it on a glass table, you it would disappear. You know, like that's how transparent this, this gem is. Um, it doesn't seem to reflect light so much as just like have light go through it completely. Dr. Lucio says, there is a trigger phrase you can use to activate this gem. Um, I have said it to be, show me what you are, but you can say whatever you want as long as the intention imbues your words. Once you speak this trigger phrase, hold this gem up to your eye and look at the object or the thing whose true form you wish to discern and it will show you. However, there are a finite number of uses. I did use one last night. There are only two left. Use them wisely. And just holds it out to your party as a whole. Who's going to take it? Uh, V's going to grab it. Okay! Uh, Manai's going to step forward as V step. <laughs> okay, so Manai doesn't want it. But she's going to step forward when V goes to grab it and say, Ah, ah, ah. I promise I won't do anything terrible with it. What if I'm in a jam and need to see things as they really are? We're dealing with crazy cult. I might need some assistance. I think you can get in people's heads well enough without having to see who they are. That's fair. Fine, I was going to sell it anyway. Take it. But I was going to take it and... Uh, who is she going to hand it to? She's going to hand it to Dewey and say... Here, keep, keep track of this, would you? I can't uh, use it. Sure. Okay, Dewey, you have the gem of seeing. <laughs> Which basically what, what yeah. this means is once a day you use, you activate it with a... Or sorry, you can activate it any time uh, as a bonus action. And say it's trigger phrase. There are only two charges left. And it will grant you true sight through the gem. Whatever you look at. Uh, for the duration of one minute. So write that down somewhere. I can also send these item descriptions to you after the session ends. And Dr. Lucy says, uh, and of course, hydrate. Last but not least, I would like to give your group this bowl of scrying. I, uh, here it is. Uh, and they they reach they reach out to Squeak, who hands them uh, a, a small like metal bowl. If you've ever seen, um, I don't know what they're called, but like the small brass bowls that aid you in meditation. You like tap on the side, and it rings out, and you meditate for as long as it rings out. It sort of looks like that. Uh, ha just holds it out to your party as a whole, and you see like uh, arcane runes inscribed along the brass edges of this bowl. Uh, and they say. Um, you have to fill this bowl halfway with your blood. Uh, it will work once a day, it resets at dawn, uh, but it will allow the two of us to communicate as long as I also have it active. Let's just say, let's just try to check in at a certain time of night every day, if that's okay with the four of you. Well, if it involves bleeding, it should go to Oka. They love to make themselves bleed. What are you talking about? Nothing. What? <laughs> uh, Dr. Luso hands the Imagine bowl to you. Me. <laughs> it's a, it, it does seem like a lot of blood, but it's, it a, it's a pretty small, it's a pretty small bowl. Uh, so what this means is, in order to activate this bowl, roll uh, 1d6, and you lose that much blood and necrotic damage. Uh, and then you're you're able to activate the the bowl. And as long as Dr. Luso has the other end of this bowl and also has it active, the two of you will be able to see each other through it. Does my celestial resistance apply to that necrotic damage? That'd be nice. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, it applies to all necrotic damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah, then it does. Oh, yeah. See, that's why it should go to Oka. <laughs> I knew all along. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> cool. Sure you did. <laughs> We are feeling a bit sassy today. Uh, do you have any other questions before you leave? I can, of course, replenish your rations as well and any other materials you might have used during your journey to get here. That would be nice. Certainly. 
Uh, and Squeak and Dr. Luso help, like, get your saddlebags, you know, ready, and, like, your, like, gives you your rations back, etc. Um, and Dr. Luso says, uh, Dabathati should only be about a 20, maybe 15 days journey from here. Certainly not as far as Fire Root Farm, where you came from to visit me. Probably only halfway. Oh, just gonna walk back and forth across the wastes, aren't we? Suppose so. Do we have a do your path? You have to cross the uh, Godspine, don't we? Yes, you have to cross the Godspine once, and then you can make your way along the heavily patrolled, a much safer heavenly road until you reach Dabathati. Mm-hmm. I think getting to the Godspine should be about three days travel from here, and the journey through the Godspine might take you another two or three, and then the rest the rest of the days should lead you to Dabathati. Cool. Great. I've been there before from this region, so... Great. Then you should lead the way. Um, I mentioned this to Oka earlier, but I have another group that I've sent out on a mission. To Kirtal, actually. Um, they should be back by the time you get back. There's no deadline on this mission per se, but if you could figure out what you need to figure out and get back within, let's say, a month and a half, that would be appreciated. We do have a three-year time limit before the next cataclysm occurs that will very likely wipe wipe out existence as we know it, or some other horrible thing. So time is of the essence. Well, let's get going. Very well. Thank you for your help and Godspeed. Uh, and Dr. Luso sees the four of you off waves from their homestead. A squeak also sort of stands on the threshold of Dr. Luso's cottage, uh, arms crossed over her big round little belly, uh, looking very uh, annoyedly at the four of you as you set out. Okay, uh, so now we're going to enter a little uh, travel monologue similar to how we got here, um, but this time we're going to be using uh that special relationship building mini game that i've developed uh with help from um the starcrossed system uh is my inspiration from that starcrossed rpg check them out uh so yeah how we're going to do this is we're going to role play out each like chunk chunk of time that it takes for you to get to dabathati um but before i do that i just want to check in with y'all as players how are we feeling how are we doing good i'm psyched yeah great Awesome. Okay, uh, so how we're going to do this is, let's say what happens during the first week, a week in Endake is eight days, is I am going to just go nosies. Huh? Alright, so Devin, you're the last to go. <laughs> so Devin, you are going to be our first roller. So you're going to roll on the table of prompts. That's your job. Uh, but first off, I need you as Manaya to pick an initiator. Pick who you want to be your partner in the scene. Dewey. Okay. Manaya and Dewey. Sounds good. So, Manaya, roll them bone, bones. Roll two D tw- D100s. So, roll a D100 twice. Okay. In that case, I use my super fancy schmancy. Oh. Fancy dice. Trans right oh. dice. Fancy trans right dice. Trans right dice. And my super fancy ace right dice. Ace right and trans right. Let's do it. As, uh,. As my two things. Here we go. So that's 54 for the first one. Okay. And 17 for the and second 17, one. 17, you said? Yes. Okay. So your uh, your options, uh, Max, you're going to choose as Dewey. You choose between these. The first one is a minor injury. The second one is receiving a gift. Uh, a minor injury or receiving a gift. A minor injury. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so what this means now uh, is the two of you work together to establish what time of day it is when this scene happens. Whether you're on the road, you're at camp, or off foraging, whether Oka and V are nearby to potentially also join the scene, and any other small events or details that might be relevant to this. So what time of day is it? Midday, maybe? Midday. Okay, middle of the day. Right after lunch? 
Great, right after lunch. Love it. So if, if it's right after lunch, or have you guys like stopped to take lunch? Are you like paused at camp? Or are you eating and walking? Uh, we probably paused. Cool. You've paused. Uh, are Oka and V nearby? I think Oka's minding their own business. Okay. They're just hanging out. What about V? He's probably eavesdropping, but you know, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Uh, and any other small <laughs> events or details you'd like to establish that might be relevant to the scene before we start? Uh, we're probably about packing up to start moving again. Cool. Okay, uh, so y'all have just finished lunch and you're in the middle of packing up. Uh, when now... So this is, let's say, the, do the middle of the day that you just left, uh, Dr. Luso's farm farmstead. Uh, and now you've, you've paused... You've walked a few hours, you've paused briefly to have lunch. All around you, you see the red rock dunes of the Badlands surrounding you. You see like an Ocotillo nearby, the spiny cactus, flowering cactus uh, plant. Uh, you see like lizards skittering across the ground. Uh, there aren't any other travelers nearby. You've set up, quote unquote, a temporary camp near a large rock, uh, resting in the shade of it uh, to protect yourself from the ever-present light and heat that radiates and oppresses uh, your skin like this hot blanket of molasses. That's how hot it is. Um, so now, uh, Dewey and Manaya, the two of you find yourselves packing up your lunch uh, plates uh, and mess kits next to each other. Uh, when Dewey, you start the scene. Uh, remember, your prompt is a minor injury. Take it however you want, the two of you. And Dewey, you say to Manaya? Is it is it just me or is it is it really hot out here? Huh? Are you are you a little dizzy? Uh, do we, are you all, are you all right? Have you have you had water? Do I have water? Then I'm gonna pull out <laughs> her water skin and be like, here, here, sit down, drink this. Probably just a little bit dehydrated. <sighs> okay. I sip. <laughs> nice. This is why we hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> you're always so prepared. Well, when you're out on the sea, you never know what's going to come by. Speaking of, have you... Have you ever been outside of Uhanahi until? Uh, mostly just moved around the islands. Mm. Never really left. Have you? You've been everywhere though, right? Well, I wouldn't say everywhere, but I have been to ports in seven of the eight nations. Wow. Kirtal's the only landlocked one I haven't been to. So you're traveling all the time? Well, you get used to it. I'll say those cakes we had yesterday were so rich, so much flavor. I'm used to grits and other flavorless things, and if they do have flavor, it's salt water. <laughs> yeah, me too. The, the food at uh, my previous employer, uh, was not very good. But... Speaking of your em previous employer, I must apologize about how I looked at you a few days ago. Yesterday? Day before. I, um... I've been thinking about the URL and my thoughts about the Queen and everything, and at first I was angry at the URL and I equated you to them, and I'm... I'm sorry about that. I know you ran away and are probably have put that all behind you. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, thanks for the uh, apology. Um, just just for my records, when was this that you were upset at me? Uh, oh, oh no, that's not important. Here, you should have some more water. It's uh, okay. Uh. I'm not good with these temperature changes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
It's brutal out here, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and it's a good thing I have all of you to keep me from doing dumb shit. <laughs> and Dewey, you drink down, uh, you gulp down some more water that Manias handed to you, and you feel significantly more refreshed. Is that the end of your scene? Do y'all feel like you want to keep going? Does that feel like a good end? It's pretty good. Sounds good. Okay, great. Uh, so now, Dewey slash Max, you are the new roller. Pick an initiator. Okay. That isn't Devin, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. Great. Okay. Uh, so why don't the two of you, before we, you know what? Actually, yeah, roller. Uh, please roll two D100s for me. Yes. That's it, Max. Yes. Do it. Roll, roll your D1. Oh, it's like a ball. <gasps> it's a ball. <laughs> wow, look at that. Oh, oh wow, thank you for the raid, Questing Time, yet again. Ooh, That's incredible. Hello. Thank you, all these people. You are in the middle of Hong Kong. Uh, you are in the, <laughs> we are in the middle of a cool relationship building mini game that we have in our, D and, uh, in our TTRPG session. So welcome. Uh, Max just rolled their D100 to determine the prompt and give me those numbers, roll them bones. 35 and 38. Let's see what that is. Oh. 35 and 38, okay. Uh, your options, C slash Oka, are a misunderstanding and an accident. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's gonna go well. So, C, you pick which one you want to start with. Um... I think an accident. Sounds good. <laughs> Let me just strike that one off on our list here. Uh, so what this means is now the two of you work together to establish how much time has passed between the previous scene, which is the scene between Dewey and Manaya, as well as what time of day it is right now. So how much time do y'all think has passed? Maybe like another day or so. Another day? Okay, the next day. Maybe two days later. Mm -hmm. Okay, two days from uh, the previous scene. So what time of day is this, is this accident happening? just when I it's like getting dark when we're asleep i yes, love it so. yeah just when it's getting you're in the middle of middle of sleeping or just when you're getting to sleep which one oh <laughs> y'all decide i'll let you i'll let you choose max i like them both uh when when i'm sleeping in the middle of sleeping sounds good so remember the prompt again is an accident so um i'm assuming the other pcs won't be involved in this uh let's say as the gml decide that the two of you have set up your bedrolls next to each other maybe even in the same two-person tent that oka has so y'all are in the same tent if that's okay with the two of you unless you you think that would be out of character great that's what's happening perfect yeah, Dewey, it's Dewey's turn to be in the tent with Oka that night. Uh, so this is what's happening. The ever-present darkness is all around you. Let's say um, V is on watch, uh, but V will not be involved in this situation because what happens within the tent is this. Oka, start the scene for us. Uh, well... Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were tent mates. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Oka has to get up in the middle of the night uh, to take a, a bio break. Uh, uh, and they, like, you know, do a, like, a half asleep nod to be, you know? Okay. Uh, and uh, they go, they do their business, and then they're coming back. Uh, they open up the tent flap, uh, and they fall, they not trip, they just decide that gravity is, they're done with it. <laughs> they would like to be more asleep than they are right now. Uh, and they fall like body, like all, you know, 160 pounds of themselves, uh, right on top of Dewey. Oh God. <laughs> it's reminding me of that like horse of mine that just stomps on the bird in the middle of the, <laughs> the horse pasture. It's like walking and the bird goes squeak and it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> and the scene's done. Dewey's dead. <laughs> <laughs> K -K 
T-P-K-O. <laughs> uh, so Dewey, you feel this huge weight. You're in the middle of dreaming. You're dreaming about your ex and your kid. Uh, and you're dreaming, uh, their faces are floating in front of, of your vision. Uh, and then suddenly they become flattened like pancakes or s- scallion pancakes. And you wake up with a huge weight bearing down upon your feathered hollow, hollow bones. Let me out! Let me out! Let me go! <laughs> I won't say anything! I won't say anything! Please, let me go! What are you talking about? Stop talking, Dewey! Who, who uh, is- and Oka, like, slaps their hand down. Uh, on, on Dewey's beak, I guess. <laughs> ah, no! I won't say anything! Please! Well, stop me. saying something, then. You're already saying something. Just stop saying something. God. Who, who's- Wait. Oka? Uh, what? 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 Is someone- what is some- uh, Oka kind of sits up now a little bit, uh, which only furthers to, like, shift their weight on Dewey's tiny little oh. bird body. <laughs> uh, like, are we being- is something happening? Dewey, is there you, a monster? You, you feel something Do within you, you snap. <laughs> <laughs> Get off me! Oh. I try futilely oh. to push Oka off of me. Make a strength uh, check. Great. <laughs> I love doing that in the middle of the night. <laughs> okay, you don't have to do anything in oh, response. Shit. Strength check against Oka's weight. Yes, against Oka's muscular, ripped, awesome our body. Uh, what did you get, <gasps> Dewey? I got a 19. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, Dewey, <laughs> adrenaline, adrenaline kicks in, uh, and you and you shove Oka off, and Oka, you go tumbling back onto your side of the bed. Yeah, I think uh, Oka tumbles so far, and now they're trying to catch themselves that they they like grab the side of the tent and pull it. You know, <gasps> so the whole so the whole thing just kind of like goes sideways. V, you're just en- you're like- enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, I just hear things from a tent, and I'm like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the noises are, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the tent begins to collapse, its fragile bones begin to, uh, get pulled down as the flaps of the canvas begin to fall down upon the two of you. What? <laughs> What's going on? Dewey, what is that you? you? What do you do? <laughs> uh, God. Let me out of here. Uh, yeah, I think we're just trying to pull pull the canvas off uh-huh. off of us at this point. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The two of you are able to right the tent again after your panic uh, dissipates and you realize what's happened. Dewey, did you have a nightmare or something? What's wrong with you? <laughs> were you Were you drunk? <laughs> what? No, I Why ran should... out of be- booze like a day and a half ago. It fucking sucks. Why were you- what? Why it's were you okay. on top- Listen, Okay. Everyone's had nightmares before. I understand. You got a little flaily. It's okay, we just put the tent back up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, does not understand that it was their fault. <laughs> yeah! Uh, the two of you work together to write the tent again. Uh, and Oka, in your flailing, you notice that you broke Dewey's glasses. Wait, I was wearing them to sleep? I assume you, you put them oh, aside no. somewhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there, it was probably in the tent at some point. Does anyone have mending? Or, <laughs> <laughs> or am I just blind for the rest of this? <laughs> I, won't, I won't make you take a penalty to it. I just think it's like a, a little note of flavor, a consequence from all the fl- flailing in the tent. Oh, uh... Shit. Uh, I look at Dewey. I look at the glasses. I look at Dewey. And I don't say anything. But I take the glasses. Are those my glasses? What? Are those my glasses? I mean, they're in here. There might be glasses in here. Yes, I broke your glasses, Dewey. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Listen, I'll see if. Uh, fuck. Uh, Oka starts, like, going through their pack. Uh, and they bring out uh, a hunting trap. And they bring out, like, two vials of thick black liquid. They bring out like a, a, a length of chain. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and they kind of look at it. Mm-hmm. And I look at Dewey. Mm-hmm. And they look at their stuff. Mm-hmm. They look at the glasses. Mm-hmm. Wait, you're a mechanic, right? You can just. <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah, fix but this. I'd, lo- I'd love to be able to see to like fix them. Okay, okay, I I know. I understand. I'm gonna make this right, Dewey. I feel bad because now I broke the glasses. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Great. Uh, and I think the two of you, uh, with Dewey coaching you, Oka acting as Dewey's eyes, managed to fix the glasses again. Though they do look, they're slightly lopsided now. Uh, but Dewey can see through them just fine. They're just a little, it's clear that they were broken and then messily patched back together. It's now. kind of like there's tape. There's like tape in the middle. You look like a total nerd. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, it's very Harry Potter. And I think that that is how that scene ends. Uh, with the two of you commiserating over broken glasses. Wonderful. Uh, so see, before we get to you being the roller, I'm just going to say that as a GM, uh, these two scenes happen, right? Pretty much back to back. And then, oh, hydration station, y'all. Uh, and then about maybe a few days pass, let's say almost like, let's say a week passes. By the end of this week, you are making your way out of the God Spine. Uh, when you first entered the God Spine from the Badlands of Northern Talmud, traveling south, so you can then move farther west to get to Dabathati, uh, you notice an immediate change in the terrain. Uh, you reach the, ba- the you reach the God Spine uh, on the morning of your let's say fourth day of travel. Uh, You see its tall, jagged peaks looming in front of you at the bottom of a dip in the dunes, the duned valleys of uh, the Badlands. You see uh, a storm gathering uh, in the very peaks of these mountains with lightning flashing through them and the thunderous booms in the distance. This storm looks ever-present because as you approach the god spine, it doesn't dissipate at all. Thankfully, it's quite a few leagues to your east, uh, so it won't be storming where you're traveling through, but you do see flashes of lightning from the very unfortunate section of god spine that it, the storm's attacking. Uh, you also see what appears to be like a small, narrow path that you decide to take uh, to make your way farther south through the god spine. Uh, you see these tall, looming um, crevices uh, th- at the narrowest point at- during your travels through the god spine. Only two of you can watch shoulder to shoulder, while at the widest point, multiple caravans could easily skirt their way uh, through the god spine. Uh, the name of the game here is Wild, Jagged, Gray, Piercing Rock. Uh, and all around you is just rock and little mosses and little patches of hardy ferns growing in the cracks uh, between boulders. Uh, so the four of you travel through the gods by you, you make your tents, uh, it, you, you set up camp in caves that you can find. Yes, Oka? Uh, quick question. Where, over which country or which uh, nation does the storm look like it's over? Uh, it's still within Talmud. Would I be able to tell? Yeah, it's it's still within the Republic, okay. for sure. Yeah, um, but as you're as you're making your way farther south, you know, you you set up camp within caves. You set up camp within like overhangs. You know, you try to find the most sheltered parts that don't also have like owl bears sleeping in them. There was an incident where you thought it was abandoned, but a sharp eye noticed some droppings and feathers on the ground that looked fresh. So you decided to leave it alone. Um, Thanks, so, Dewey. <laughs> well, you're surprised that you made your way. Th- through the god spine with almost no incident aside from that almost owlbear attack until of course one night happens uh the four of you are sleeping tell me who is on watch oka can be on watch okay uh oka oka and manaya yeah i thought we were doing watch in pairs Okay, uh, Oka and Manaya, the two of you are, are on watch while Devin and, uh, excuse me, Dewey and V are sleeping. Sorry, two D names. Um, where have you set up camp? Uh, what about, uh, kind of like, uh, a couple of spires that kind of come up almost like a cone? So kind of like a cave and kind of like a rocky, rocky cliff outcropping, perhaps. Sounds good. Two between two spires. 
Is that what you're saying? Sure. Okay, uh, yeah, so you, you've you set up camp between these two spires uh, in the shadow of the spires, let's say, keeping a fire burning and your eyes peeled for any activity that might be happening on the fringes of this darkness. Um, when something seems to drop from the spires, at first, Manaya, you think it's like a rock that's come loose from the spire, but as it descends upon your head, your ears sort of perk and the last thing you see is Oka's face uh, being illuminated by the campfire before everything goes dark and something lands upon your head. Um, and we are now in a phase of accelerated combat. Uh, a lot of fun here uh, as, as two strange creatures attack your party. Uh, the thing that landed on your head, Manaya, Oka, you see it clearly being lit by the uh, flames of the campfire. It appears to be like a giant... Um, like a cloak, uh, like a big leathery cloak, but with like fa like sharp claws at the edges, a uh, much big bigger even than the thing that attacked you uh, in the tunnel with the quay. Uh, this cloak goes all the way down to like Manaya's knees, which is considerable because Manaya is a big a big girl. Horrible. So Yes. Okay. Uh, so what this means now for accelerated combat, for those who don't know, it is in my little homebrew system, we're still working the kinks out of, but it's a way to handle uh, combat on the road in a way that's fast, but still feels narrative. Uh, so there are three primary roles we're going to make. We're going to make the first two as a group together. Um, the first two are our fight and wound roles to basically see how much damage we do and how much damage we take uh, to sort of uh, flavor our narration. So I don't all of us First roll together, our fight roll, that's your d20. You decide if you want to primarily rely on your spell casting or your martial abilities, if you can do both. So just make it made like a normal attack roll. So make your fight roll. Uh, Connie, can you get us some nice battle music to go? Absolutely. Please? This is just some ominous music that I've got up here, but I can get some nice, that nice, nice bat No, bat. Devin, no. <laughs> oh, boy. No. Oh, Lord. Uh, can Something. I use my last point of inspiration? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, 23 for V. V got oh a 23. Let me write that down. Uh, Oka is using their last point of inspiration. Let me take that off of the overlay so everyone knows that you have none Max left. Max sitting here stockpiling. <laughs> okay. Uh, so V got 23. What did everyone else get? Uh, Oka got an unnatural 20. Cool, 20. Do we? 14. 14, Manaya? I'm keeping this for the flavor. Okay. That one. <gasps> oh boy! I love that. I'm gonna give you a point of inspiration for taking taking that L. Taking that L. Uh, in the chat, everyone. F we have, in the chat. We have one, one in the chat. We have one point one. of collective inspiration, I... just so y'all know. Thanks to a very generous donation. How many? Uh, one point of collective inspiration, as you can one. see on the overlay, uh, thanks to a donation. Uh, so, okay, V, you got a 23, Oka, you got a 20, a Dewey, you got a 14, and Manaya, you got a nat 1. Remember, a nat 1 means you have a you deal a pathetic amount of damage. And this also means you have disadvantage on your following rolls. Manaya, unfortunately. Let's say it's because... Well, we can narrate it together uh, after we look at what the wound rolls are. So why don't everyone make a wound roll for me? This is made similar to a either constitution or a dexterity saving throw, dealer's choice. Unnatural 20. Okay. Damn. He's, He's doing really it. good. A 12. 12, okay. 13 from Dewey. 13 from Dewey, sounds good. Uh-oh. Manaya. One. <laughs> a nap. One. Again. Uh, I use different dice this time. Um, okay, this means that you lose consciousness. You oh, acquire shit. a severe injury and you cannot make an inspired roll, which is the fourth one. Wow, okay, so Manaya gets her ass kicked in this fight, is what this means. Okay, so before oh. we make our inspired yes. roll, which is like up to the players what skill you want to use for your inspired roll, um, why don't the four of you tell me how this fight goes up until that point, based on these rolls? Well, uh, Oka immediately starts screaming uh, as Manaya gets a brand new cloak, uh -huh. or yelling rather. Uh huh. Uh, and they, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, they back off 
they back off a little, uh, and, you know, uh, gonna try to, you know, do some, do some good old fire slashing at it, uh, trying to be more careful of, uh, uh, not hurting Manaya. Uh, with your Where with your that? twenty with your unnatural twenty fight roll, you're able to do it. Uh, as Manaya, you're like flailing around with this cloak obscuring your vision, and you can feel like teeth all around you, like chomping, chomping on you, as this thing is like trying to eat eat you. It seems. Um, I think you like you begin to stumble and flail around as Okub. You you draw your sword and you try to slice this thing off of Manaya. By this point, Dewey and V, the two of you, have woken up from a lot of the screaming and, of course, the sounds of battle from outside your tent. Um, so do it with your 14 and V with your 23. How are you approaching the battle? Um, there are two of these, remember. <laughs> yeah. So V is going to jump out there, see what's going on, see the two creatures. Uh, she's going to use... Hold a on. Sorcery. There are no... There are not two creatures. Only one has come down. Just upon... the one? Yeah. I only said okay. one has come down and has ap- apparently consumed Manaya. Okay. Um, okay, so then I'm going to see the one, uh, I'm going to run in the direction of Manaya, leap and do like an acrobatic flip and cast, uh, Scorching Ray. Okay. So basically, since the thing is over it, I'm just going to be like, basically it's shielding Manaya from Scorching Ray. And okay. just blast the crap out of it and then land on my feet and go outside. Cool. Uh, you see, it, it becomes crispy, crispy fried cloak skin. You're like, uh... You're like a you're like a firebender. You like do the flip and you're like. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You do like a firebending flip. Very very cool. We just watched Legend of Korra me and C, so we're very inspired by that. <laughs> uh, v, you burst out of your tent. You flip, and you you see this the fire just scorch, create huge scorch marks along this thing's body. Uh, Dewey, what are you doing while this is happening? Uh, I pop out of the tent to see something has replaced Manaya. I don't know what it is, so I scrambled to find a <laughs> weapon, and I just, like, smack at it. Yes. As as you take out your, your sword, is it your flying sword that you're taking out? No, it's my quarterstaff. Okay, you take out your quarterstaff. As you as you raise your quarterstaff to slap it, though, um, something else happens. All four of you hear a kind of um, chittering bellow, like, oh, no. like a lion's roaring, but oh. its mouth is made of beaks. Is kind of what it sounds like. I hear a chittering bellow coming from behind you, and all four of you sort of whip around in time, except for Manaya's. Everything's muffled. You can't really hear anything. You don't really know what's going on. Uh, when another creature bursts out of a nearby darkness, uh, dark hiding area in 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 this like very cavernous space, you see it's very tall. First of all, taller than even Manaya. It's a creature that looks like a cross between a lobster. And a scorpion, maybe? It has these, like, tentacles coming out of its mouth. Huge lobster-like pincers. Large, ferocious-looking black eyes. A chitinous plating all over its body. And a large stinger coming out of its butt. Uh, And it has, like, many, like, various legs that are all, like... Uh, And Oka... You could use your inspired world to find out what the hell these things are. uh, But we're not quite there yet. So based on your wound rolls, right... Uh, v, you got a 20, Oka, you got a 12, Dewey got a 13, Manaya got a 1. Tell me how these wound rolls factor into the next portion of this fight. So... Hmm. Do I want to reveal this? Do it! I think, reveal I, it! I think I'll reveal this. Reveal it. <gasps> so, audience oh members. Oh my god. Uh, Manaya is horribly afraid of spiders. <laughs> And one of her greatest fears, and one of her recurring nightmares from when she was a child, uh, is spiders being all over her and, like, biting. Ooh. Um, combine wow. that, combine that with the fact that just a few weeks ago, uh, another thing flew onto her face and, and obscured her vision, and now that she's learned, might have stolen her soul. So she... <laughs> um, or had the chance to, basically. Uh, so she's... I don't want to call it trauma, but... You can call it trauma. Can I? <laughs> yes. I'm going to give you permission to call it trauma. Okay. Uh, so she's a little bit traumatized from that. And... Uh, thrashes about for a good while, probably bumping into some of her party members. 
and then probably faints. Uh huh. Uh huh. I love that. So as soon as this like other huge lo- like lobster scorpion towering creature with its very thrashing tentacle mouth appears, all of you just sort of see Manaya go Buh! and keel over uh, and stop moving. And just, with this thing on, with this thing on, yeah, she looks like she could be dead. Yeah, is what is how yes. bad this looks, and you can see like blood now seeping out from like the end of where this huge teethy cloak is attached to like the bottoms of her thighs. You see blood like just soaking her pants, like soaking through the blackness of her pants. Woof. Woof. So how do uh, y'all? I think. Go ahead. Uh, as Manaya falls over, just taking into account Oka's wound roll, mm-hmm. uh, a twelve, which uh, is uh, twelve, means um, a, a sound beating. You acquire a minor injury. It's probably like you, you lose some. You get hit. You get smacked around a bit. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Oka is like fuck, 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 uh, and uh, has to you know step out of the way of Manaya falling because they were like stabbing at the thing. Mm-hmm. around her mm-hmm. uh, and they step out of the way and right into the line of trajectory of that stinger uh-huh. uh, and I would actually uh, given what I would like to do on my inspiration roll I oh it's horrible uh, I would love it to uh, pierce them perhaps in the shoulder or the hand uh, and drag them up into the air sounds good and what this means for the mild injury you've ac- accrued i think this makes sense the poison seeps through your body the venom from this stinger you feel you you jerk around uh, as you lose control of your nerves for a period of time and what this means is for the remainder of your go ahead i have resistance to poison damage nice. okay so I'll, I'll mitigate some of the effects of the poison then um what this means is for the remainder i have advantage on saves against poison sorry no worries I let me finish talking <laughs> Okay. Uh, so but the, I have these. I have these things. I say. Say you have. Say you have resistance to poison one more time. Say it. Say it one more time. Right? Say it. Say you have dark vision. Say it. Say it. Okay. So what this means, Oka, is for the remainder of your travel time, as this poison seeps through your body and you're trying to fight it off, you can feel your Asimar heritage, you know, and your blood hunter training, like kicking in as you're trying to fight this off. But what this means is for the remainder of your travel time, you have a persistent fever that sort of comes with getting this venom, which means usually it would mean you have disadvantage on inspired rolls during accelerated combats for the rest of this time. I'm not going to give you that because you're able to fight it off pretty well. I'll allow it um but basically what this means is for the rest of the travel time you have to treat your fever by drinking lots of water taking medicine and eating hot broths and soups if you fail to treat your fever daily it will persist for 10 days after your travel ends giving you disadvantage on all attack rolls for the duration okay get a mild injury. self-care all right so okay as you're hoisted okay. into the air by the stinger we like flash forward to you having to like drink soup but like now we're back in the present as you're like hoisted up by the stinger and you're jerking like a like a wooden marionette dewey you and v look up in horror uh how what do the two of oh thank you for the hydration i have to pee now thanks guys yes for, get, for this hydration like fucking for real like we, we're all here with full ass bladders i regret it actually i don't regret it thank you for redeeming your channel points um dewey and v what do the two of you do for this accelerated combat um well getting an unnatural 20 i feel like i don't really receive much damage but i would say from uh, uh from Manaya's flailing around i've had to like like she came at me and i kind of like jumped onto one spider and then the other spider and like just did some acrobatic shit to avoid all that shit uh-huh. Oh, uh, uh, on top of the spires? Like, jumping between the spires? Yeah, like, I jumped between spires. Oh, and that's like, cool. The ground, and maybe I kind of, like, landed a little bit wrong in my foot, but I'm okay. I really like that. I'm actually going to give you a point of inspiration for that. Um, excuse me. There we go. Yeah, so you jump from spire to spire as this huge scorpion lobster crab thing comes bursting out of the darkness, uh, screeching and chittering. Uh, Dewey, what do you do? You got a 13 for your wound roll, which means you also get a sound beating. You acquire a minor, a mild injury. Um, can I say that when I see Manai go down, I start trying to, like, pull out the edges of the I love that. Her, sure, and yeah. And because it's got teeth, it, like, <laughs> kind of hurts my hands, like, uh-huh. rubs up my hands a little bit. Sure. And I 
am not really paying attention to the thing behind me. Sounds good. But because you got like a pretty normal attack roll, I I'm going to say you're able to pull this thing off. You're like, oh, you grunt and strain against this thing and you rip it off and it's horrible. Uh, it's like, it looks like a cloak, but like the inside of the cloak is just covered in teeth, like just tons of little biting teeth. Um, and you see Manaya is like bleeding everywhere. She looks like she's either dead or severely unconscious, uh, and you're, you, you, you mess up your hands and your arms a little bit. This thing seems to want to attach onto you, but you're able to fight it off, so you're like resting against it. Uh, and what this means is for the rest of your travel time, you get persistent um, bruises all over your body after the cuts are fairly shallow, but they seem to like penetrate into the muscle and bruise it. Um, so what this means is for the remainder of your travel time, Dewey, you have disadvantage on wound rolls during accelerated combat. You must treat your bruises with daily icing. If you fail to ice your bruises daily, your bruises persist for 10 days after your travel ends, giving you disadvantage on all saving throws for the duration. You just gotta ice yourself up. So we flash forward a little bit. we're gonna find ice? I don't know. If, does that, Wait, do any of you have ice has, breath? like, frost, frost, frost. Ray of frost. V, do you have ray of frost? <laughs> I have Ray of Frost. But that wouldn't hurt you unless he just like, yeah. <laughs> like did like a tiny, I'd allow it. I'd allow V to treat, help treat your bruises. I would say you have okay. enough control over your magic at level four to know how I'll to do that. I'll choose a rock and then you can use the rock to like- That's a good idea. That's actually a really good idea. I'm going to give you another point of inspiration for that, V. Uh, Future slash inspiration. Air, so Future inspiration, yep. Uh, so <laughs> we flash forward to seeing uh, Dev, uh, why do I keep saying Devin Dewey icing their bruised feathers with a uh, frozen rock that V has handed them? But now we flash back to the present and uh, Dewey, you're wrestling with this huge teeth cloak as Manaya slowly bleeds out on, on the cold hard ground next to you. I can't believe you got two now ones in a row. Cold, hard so now we're moving on to the fun part, inspired rolls. Unfortunately, Manaya, you can't make this roll. Uh, you're lying on the ground. Um, but I will let you make a death roll just for flavor to see like how you're doing you won't be able to die from this don't worry unless uh, even if you roll in that one that's just two failures and you only need three is what i mean so manai why don't you make a death roll for me while the three of you make your uh three of you tell me what you want to do for your inspired roll and then i'll tell you what skill to roll for you don't add anything to the death save no nope, but straight right? up yep yeah oh. nine that is that's a failure that is <laughs> Manaya, you, you, the blood, all of you can see now, Oka swinging from this huge scorpion tail, uh, Dewey wrestling this teethed cloak, and V, you get the clearest angle, you're, you're straddling the two spires, looking down, you see the blood pooling around Manaya's limp form, getting bigger and bigger. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Alright, what are y'all doing for your inspired rolls? This is when you get to show off, do whatever you want. Tell me. Oka heard blood. So, I would like, uh, <laughs> would like... Oka well, heard blood. <laughs> So she looks at the, the creature below her, still on top of Manaya. She sees this little scorpion dude. She's going to like let her body fall and use twin spells with a sorcery point to do Scorching Ray both down at that creature and at the scorpion. Cool. And so like, the one on the guy on top of Manaya is just going to get super heat blast while the other one is a little bit of distance. Yeah, okay, that's... that's really, really dope. I'm going to say I'm going to allow you to choose either a regular attack roll or an arcana check. Uh, so if I did attack roll, uh, actually, bring I kind of want to rule that for inspired rolls, it can't be an attack roll or a saving throw because then it makes fight and wound rolls feel less special. So it has to be a skill. So I'm going to let you choose either acrobatics because you're doing some like crazy flipping shit. Sorry, not crazy. A ridiculous flipping shit or an arcana check to see how well you can channel your magic. Uh, then I'll take acrobatics. Sounds good. Roll that acrobatics. Let's see how well you do this. Uh, I got a 21. Oh, uh, yeah. You legend your legend of Korra your way down the spire and whoosh, and the, 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 <laughs> the power of the magic leaping out from your palms like holds you aloft in the air like you're, like your Iron Man or some shit. Uh, and you whoosh, you like blast this cloaked creature away from Dewey and it lets out a uh, as it like tumbles through the campfire actually it begins to catch on fire uh, and you see it begin to try to flap flap uh its wings uh coming like wings from from the cloak like the cloak is allowing it to like fly it, and it seems to be like trying to escape is what's happening a uh, man as you blast the scorpion thing uh it, it lets out a chittering roar and it drops oka onto the ground so oka and or dewey oh. what are you doing for your inspired roles I would actually prefer to stay up there. Okay, sure. Uh, maybe it's, you're just swinging around wildly on its stinger then. 
Would you like to go first? Uh, sure. I want to try and... Moving people who are injured is a bad idea. Uh, I just want to, like... Help Manaya? Yeah, yeah, I want to help Manaya. Okay, you can use your inspired role to try to lessen the repercussions of Manaya's that one wound roll. Then, let's say. Like, make her not have such a horrible, lasting injury. Uh, so why don't you make a medicine check? I'm using inspiration for that. Okay, I'm gonna take one away from you. <laughs> uh, 15. 15, uh, let's see. 15, 15, 15, uh, that is, uh, pretty fair. So I'm, I'm gonna allow you to, I think you patch up Manaya pretty well. You, like, manage to stop the bleeding, right? Which is the most important thing. You wipe off all the blood and you see, similar to how you're beat up, that the cuts are superficial, but they seem to bleed a lot. So maybe like this creature has some sort of like venom that like causes a lot of bleeding or hemorrhaging, um, but you're able to like wrap, you're able to like apply pressure, you're able to stop the bleeding, but Manaya is still very torn up. You don't manage to obviously suture the wounds, but you manage to contain it. So uh, what this means for Manaya, for your injuries is I'm going to remove one ailment that you're going to receive uh, due to Dewey's help. So thank you, Dewey. Oko, what are you doing? Okay, okay, here's what I wanna do. Uh... I would like to use uh, some flavorful aspect of uh, the bl- my like blood curse, my blood curse of binding, and okay. what I would like to do uh, is not only take the blood that's coming out of where I have been shot, you know, I mm-hmm. like, or maybe like it's. I think it actually is okay if uh, Oka falls mm-hmm. and then they get it mm-hmm. uh, once they're on the ground from their own wound. Uh, and they would also like to use uh, mana- that pool of Manaya's blood that's on the ground uh, to use their blood curse of binding, uh, which I have, uh, you know, flavored as being kind of like a blood net. Uh-huh. I'd love to try to use it to, uh, to like, make the blood uh, kind of like act almost like a rope or a chain or something uh, to from my hands, uh-huh. where I'm bleeding, uh, around the scorpion's tail to pull it down into itself. Does that make sense? Ooh. To pull the stinger into its, like, use yeah. the blood rope to pull it down. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna allow you to either make a athletics, perception, or insight check to do this. You can try to make an argument for a different skill and spin it your way. I, I actually have, uh, I have proficiency in all of those skills, actually. Pick your poison. Let's see. Let's see. This is what they were born to do. The same. Uh, I would love to insight it, I think. Oh my god, I have to pee so bad! I have to pee bad. so bad. Okay. <laughs> After okay. this battle, we'll take a break. Yes, we will. And we might uh, end the session after this battle, actually. Might, yeah. Yeah. Later. Transpener. Stop, honey! What did you just say? Transpene! You take 25 <gasps> points of psychic damage, honey. <laughs> I just realized <laughs> what I said! <laughs> it's like Puss Boy all over again! <laughs> this is so POS, oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh... Okay, so you're rolling, I'm rolling, roll it, I'm roll rolling! It, roll inside, roll inside. On this thing. <gasps> oh, it was a natural 19. Nice! Uh, which, with my insight, it's a 23. Whoa, okay. So what this means is, describe to me how you're using insight to land this. Uh, let's see. Uh, while I was swinging up there, uh, I was tracking the movements, or I was like trying to track the movements of the stinger. Uh-huh. Uh, and as like also looking down, uh, to try to like find where it is on the ground, uh, to see like to see the like whole <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, you t pose like this <laughs> in the air. <laughs> with me flailing around in my chair with a fall over. Um, let's see. Yeah, to try to find like a spot in the plating, and they see the blood, they feel their own blood, and they're like, okay, I know what to do. I know exactly where to pull that stinger down into its own body. 
Awesome. Uh, so you do that. You manage to like read the rhythm and tempo of this huge stinger swinging above your body, uh, and you use it to your advantage. And you you hear a, a sickening crunch and a snap uh, as the stinger plunges through the gaps in the plating of this monster's chitinous body, and you pierce it right in its weak spot. Uh, and you see this thing's limbs seize up, uh, and it paralyzes itself, and it keels over. Um, so the cloaked creature does get away but this creature uh is now bound because y'all rolled pretty well overall uh for everything uh this creature is now bound to the ground and you can do whatever you want with it and now we're out of our accelerated combat but i am gonna keep like one more cool combat song going uh and how we're gonna like wrap up accelerated combat also this session is Manaya, because you rolled a nat one on your wound roll you get a consequence dewey helped so it's not gonna be as severe but the consequence i have for a severe injury which is a and that one uh, is a gnarly scar. So you're gonna get a scar from this. You can describe, it's a permanent scar. It could be as big or as small as you want, but it is supposed to be kind of gnarly. What kind of scar do you get, Manaya? Manaya's never had a scar in her life. She's been a pretty safe sailor. Um. So she wears a cloak, mm -hmm. which covers most of her body. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be on her face. I refuse to put it on her face. That's fine. It's up to um, you. I won't make you do that. But I will say her legs are pretty exposed because the cloak is open in the front and everything. It's yes. just all over. Yes. Uh, so I'll say on her left leg, from the outside of her left thigh, spiraling down to the inside of her shin is a huge series of gashes, but also, yeah, series of gashes from those biting teeth. Cool. And it never yeah. quite heals itself. The pain recedes, especially after a week or two, um, but the you're, it's pretty obvious that Scar is going to remain, especially because none of you are clerics or trained to be healers, I think. Dewey, we could make an argument for Dewey knowing some medicine, but I don't know if your knowledge is quite enough to be able to remove the Scar completely. And that's the only uh, consequence. Otherwise, I had like some mechanical disadvantages, but due to Dewey's inspired role, I won't make you take them. Cool. Uh, so yeah, now this huge chitinous lobster scorpion thing is prone on the ground. Uh... What do y'all decide to do with it before we sign off for our session? Uh, I have a I have an image in my mind. Yes. Uh, which is that Oka still has their blood curse of binding active, so they're still they still have air and Manaya's blood, uh, just kind of at their magical disposal. Uh huh. Uh, and maybe as some assistance. Uh, they're going to like separate the like the streams, like kind of like a almost like it's fabric or thread that's like woven together of their and Manaya's blood, uh, and try to feed Manaya's blood back into her body. Awesome! I love that description. I'm going to give you inspiration for that. So why don't you take a point of inspiration for that? Uh, so what does it look like as you're uh, trying to feed it back into Manaya's body? Uh, Oka's never tried to do something like that, uh, and they're still, like, this is the blood curse of binding. Uh-huh. So I think, like, the tendrils, the tendrils are, like, wrapping around her body. Okay. You know, as though they were, like, some kind of, like, rope. And it's not really working that well, I think, but, like, when the blood passes over, the, like, the many open wounds mm -hmm. on her body, uh, I imagine some of it goes back in it's like kind of like pressing against her skin sure and due to both uh oka and dewey's help uh, i think your scars are not as huge so you don't have to extend all the way down to the back of your shins unless you want them to cool so they do uh so uh, but okay you're able to yeah you you siphon magically some of this blood back into manaya's body and you hear a as manaya draws breath again and is revived from unconsciousness <laughs> um. <laughs> what, what what happened? Uh 
some horrible fucked up umbrella fell on you. Also that. Yeah, you see you see the paralyzed okay. creature. Yeah. Oh. So why don't you just you just well, stay stay down there for a minute. Nice nice going. We we beat the monsters. Yeah, we did. Uh mm. and Oka's going to do the same thing they did to B when they patted her on the face, you know? <laughs> Cheekily and and do some some healing hands. Okay. Uh so we, we didn't technically, like, lose hit points during accelerated combat, but so we can just flavor it for how Healing Hand sort of closes the the wounds that Dewey stopped the bleeding from. Uh, but you do see, like, what looks like it could it could scar, especially around Manaya's left leg. That's where the biting was deepest. Cool. And um, V's gonna see, like, that Dewey's already got some hardcore bruising, so she's gonna grab a rock, cast Ray of Frost, and be like, here you go, this will help with your bruises. Oh, wonderful. You hand a cold, frosted rock after you, it, like, some, some frost comes out of your palm and you hand it to Dewey. And Dewey, you start icing yourself. So how do we want to sign off on this, uh, what's the final image? Or, like, any final actions before we sign off on this session? Is anyone going to try to investigate the monster? Is anyone going to try to, like... Who likes seafood? (laughs) Well... (laughs) Could go for some... Something to eat. Y'all are going to eat this thing? (laughs) (laughs) That was... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, oh, sure. that was it's... a joke, you're joking <laughs> Did it, what did it now land? I wasn't joking Uh, just kidding Uh, <laughs> uh is this, like, this monster maybe seems like it's an actual real life monster And not the terrifying, fucked up, shadow teeth monsters we've been fighting Mostly can I maybe make a Hunter's Bane check to see? Yes. Yes. Why don't you uh, roll um, investigation on it with advantage due to your Hunter's Bane to see if this is like a like an Endake monster or if it's like one of these like fucked up Cataclysm monsters. I'm rolling very well right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's a 21. Okay, describe to me how you're investigating this thing's body. Oh, well, I mean, I'm looking for teeth where there shouldn't be. Oh, 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 I'm going to use... Uh... Sorry, I just want to, uh, I'm going to use light, because okay. Dr. Elusa was talking about how they became more powerful in the light, so I'm going to use the light in my palm uh, and, like, cast it over. Oh, that's really, that's really cool. To the light. I love that. Yeah, why don't we have another point of inspiration for that? Um, you are actually going to see... Uh, whoa, did I fuck up and give someone inspiration that they weren't supposed to? Yes, I'm going to give you inspiration for that, uh, but I actually gave Devin some. Uh, bup, 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 where are you, C? There you are. Uh, as you cast light over the limp form of this uh, creature's body, uh, you notice that those like tentacle things that were protruding from its mouth seem to shrink away from the light. Uh, and based on your 21, this does seem to be one of these freaky new aberrant creatures brought here by the vanishing. And as you cast light over the shrinking tentacles, all four of you hear a voice from inside the darkness uh, that says, Excuse me? Yeah, all four of you hear a voice from, like, beyond the light of your campfire. Uh, a person's voice, it appears, that says, Freaky motherfucker, ain't it? Uh, and stepping into the light of your campfire, you see uh, someone in with, like, a hood, a hood on, so you can't see their face. Uh, but they seem fairly tall and to have, like, a wiry and athletic build. Uh, and you notice uh, two swords, like the hilt of two swords coming strapped to their back. Uh, And their voice comes again. They say, I've been tracking that thing for the past week. Thanks for killing it. Uh, And we we can end the session there. Okay. (laughs) Uh, 
Excuse oh, me? Hello? <laughs> Hot NPC? Who is this? Look at chat's going. <laughs> Monster Gourmet. Uh, thanks so much, everybody, for w- watching episode five. A uh, hope is what disarms the bomb um episode six again is going to be on saturday september 5th at 3 p.m cdt on twitch while lecture three of professor chong's tabletop workshop is going to be next week saturday um august 29th at 3 p.m cdt on twitch where my topic is going to be beyond yes and improv tips to improv improve uh your gming uh so yeah i'm gonna sign off again my name is yes Devin. go ahead oh uh, hey, are y'all doing anything on Tuesday evening? No, I'm not, Devin. Why? Well, uh, <laughs> so we're looking to put some more streams on this channel to give y'all some more content to be able to digest and experience. Uh, and the first thing that's going to, well, the second thing after Professor Chong's, um, is going to be every Tuesday evening. I'm going to be on this channel for myself, uh, and I'm going to be playing some video games. I'm going to be playing Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Manaya as a character takes a lot of inspiration from that game. Uh, and so I sort of wanted to bring her back to her source of inspiration and show you where her character traits come from while also streaming a video game and having fun uh, doing that. That's going to be Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. CDT. Uh, every week until we beat the game, and <laughs> once we beat the game, there's going to be more game. So we're not, we're never going to stop. Um, <laughs> video games, yes. Um, so yeah, mark your calendars starting this Tuesday, uh, and also look forward to more streams potentially happening on other days of the week. Oh heck they're yeah! They're going to happen. They're coming. We've got some plans in the works. Oh, they're coming, for sure. Yeah, so if you're free, again, that's this coming Tuesday, August 25th at 7 p.m. starting at that uh, time central. Please pop by our channel, uh, and hopefully that will happen every week. Uh, So get ready for some Final Fantasy. Uh, Let's sign off now. Right? Uh, so my name is Connie. I'm the GM and executive producer of Transplaner RPG. You can find me on Twitter at ByConnieChong. You can also find me here on Twitch and Tumblr at D and Daddy Issues, where I run a tabletop uh, meme channel. Uh, so you can follow me on Tumblr for that. Uh, let's pass it on to C. Oh, hey, my name is C. I use pronouns like they, them. Any gender neutral pronoun is cool with me. Uh, I'm a digital artist. I do lots of other stuff on the side. Uh, I like making new friends. You can follow me on Twitter at PiesharpArt or on Tumblr at pi-sharp, uh, and I'm super excited. Down to Max. I am Max, I go by the them pronouns. Uh, you can find me on mostly Instagram at starchmonger, and I want to pass it to Devin. Hi, my name is Devin, I use they them pronouns. I have no internet presence, but you can join our Discord, where I'm generally very active, and also Tuesday evenings at 7pm CDT on this channel. I'll pass it to Erica. I'm Erica, she, her, and uh, Erica New Girl. You can find me on any social media platform that I might be on. And I do stream on Twitch Friday next week. I start Horror Game Visage, so if you like the spoops, come check me out. Oh yeah, well thanks so much again everybody for watching, buy stuff from Games by B, 10% off discount if you use Transplaner 10, check out our other promo partners that have just been dropped in the chat, we love y'all, we will see you next week for for, uh, Devin's video game night and Professor Chong's, and after that we'll see you for session 6, who's this new hottie with the body? Uh, Bye y'all, peace, we're gonna raid Dicey Amazon, stay on so we can raid, and I'm gonna get that started and flash to the goodbye screen, we love you, peace.